which terminal scans and indicators of consistent results can be found in the different hierarchical approaches. So, what we did, we started by doing a systematic literature review using um, beyond the electronic database. We, we used several terms, remote laboratory, VC, learning outcomes, uh, educational engineering, and integration, curriculum integration, because it was the terms that we most uh, like to find things about VC. Then, as VC uh, is still a, a, a small community of users, we also uh, made a research considering um, the persons that we know that are working in this field. And uh, we made a third uh, review uh, considering the two major conferences on the online remote classroom, REF and EDUCOM. Then we ended with 86 papers for consideration, in which uh, some of them, most of the papers were conference papers and uh, articles from journals, but we have also some uh, book chapters. After uh, viewing these 86 papers, we eliminated some of them because although the uh, visit was shortly described in the papers or it was mentioned, the focus of the papers was not really busy. So we ended up with 55 papers for a full text uh, review and analysis. And uh, when we analyzed all these papers, we found out there were uh, two main research lines. And we call these research lines technical issues and didactical issues. In technical issues, it were uh, the papers that uh, concerned mainly with software, hardware, output description, and other technical items. And on didactical issues were the papers that described these implementation and usage in a specific course, the distribution uh, considering the research wise is there, and six of the papers they focus in both technical issues and didactical issues. So technical issues, issues were briefly described in the paper, and you can see the paper for further information. But our main issue and our main focus here were the didactical issues. For the article issues, we use the multi um, uh, study approach and we identified 20 true cases. Each case refers to a different course where this was implemented. And uh, these 22 courses cover more than 4,400 students from different educational levels, from different knowledge levels, and the type of information or the type of methodology used in this was also different. Here you can see a table with those 22 cases. In the first column you can see the course type, if it is a, a basic or specific. Uh, the academic year in which uh, the intervention, the use of uh, this year was uh, used. The number of students enrolled in that course. When you have any I, it is because it is not identified in the study, in the paper that we saw. The level of education, either vocational or secondary. The type of intervention that was used with VZ, if it was used all semester, just a little part of the semester, six weeks, whatever. And uh, the papers where, where we, we found these, um, these studies. So, each, each case, the reported data in the in the other papers, was analyzed in four dimensions. Intervention description, research analysis, educational goals, and reach conclusions. Each of them uh, would make me spend a lot of time explaining it, and uh, I just have 10 minutes. So I will try to explain uh, in detail the first one, and then if you need or want more information, either you ask me in the coffee break or whatever, or see mm -hmm. the paper. So, in interface description, we um, consider three categories according to the methodology using usage during the course. So in no descriptions lies 23% of the cases, and what we mean here is that although this was used, it is not clear from the paper the kind of methodology used. So this was used mainly to test and evaluate its capacity 
tend to perceive students' opinion about it. In the majority of the cases, in far of the cases, students assemble one or two sticks using a busy or stick in another institution. In the category rich descriptions, by the majority of the cases, and in this category, we have data such as period of time of physical usage, where it was used, if it was in class or autonomous, if it was mandatory or optional, its contribution to the final grade, used in groups or individual, type of supervision, but in most cases, we don't have all the data together, just part of it. And in all cases, although there was an effort to describe the methodology, we can consider here two types of cases. The ones that describe the methodology in more detail, and the ones that used to be And although they describe the methodology, their main purpose was to find out if students feel comfortable about visit and it was suggested if they were satisfied with it. There was just one case in which we considered that it, there was a detailed description. In this case, it was one course, of course. They, uh, the, it was used visit along with other resources, with talk, simulation, and hands on, both in classes and in assessments. And uh, the case is uh, more detailed described. I passed it on. And I will go to the conclusions. So, we found that there were two main lines of research. And that's really our research passion. We can say that VZIR is a functional and useful, useful learning instrument, well accepted by students, which should be used as a complement to end on or as a tool for distance learning. In 59% of the cases, they say that students' competencies and knowledge is improved. And it also increases students' confidence in lab and their enthusiasm and motivation. Nevertheless, of course, it's very difficult to isolate with this contribution to these results. And there are some factors that even though teachers think very well about the tasks and the resources and everything, there are some factors that compromise students' engagement and motivation. These are teachers, teacher supervision and students' first time with visit because VDIR is easy to use, but it has some things that are not immediately understood by students. So if he is not provided, he gets lost and he tends to give up. Teachers continue the attention to VDIR throughout the course by the same reasons, and VDIR contribution to the final grade. If it counts, they work with it. If it doesn't count, not so much. And just to finish, for the information design, it's important to set these tasks according to learning goals and students' knowledge. And then was identified one case where the usage of these with other resources seems to produce higher order skills in students. Last slide. These founders uh, would like to uh, propose to create a federation of these laboratories. So it's uh, all the laboratories could be assessed by each of the of the partners, and it would have, it would also have a free access repository for sharing learning resources. And to nurture that work, there are two projects. One that was created was launched last year, Easy Plus projects, and the Pilar projects that uh, we expect. Uh, help to uh, follow this uh, creation of the duration of the laboratories. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you.